Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Esteban. Hey, good afternoon. Hey, Christian. How are you? Really excited to be here and joining you uh, on, on, on this chat. Yeah, no worries. And, and so for folks that don't know you, who you are, what you do, why don't you give us the background, who you are, where you are, what you do? Sure. So my name is Esteban Garcia. I live in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I'm a, a Azure and DevOps expert. I've been um, in, the, in the software development space for over 20 years. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP in DevOps uh, developer technologies. I've been an MVP for about nine years. Uh, also, a Microsoft regional director. This is, I just came into my, my third year. I just got renewed about, about a few weeks ago. Uh, as my day job, I, I'm a senior vice president of Azure and the DevOps for a company called New Signature. Uh, so uh, I help companies move to the cloud. I help co- uh, software development teams uh deploy early and often and deliver as much value as possible to, to the business. Um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, in, that's me in a nutshell. Well, I know we're, we're kind of the MVP RD twins. So we both uh, earned our first in January. Well, when in 2012, what month? Um, I, I believe it was in, in April or July. And it, oh, yeah, so you're the first half of the year. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's, uh, I, so I, I always tell people that I'm uh, – so now because I was January of 2012, I tell people that I've been an MVP for nine and a half years. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, at some point things got shifted, and then there was one year when we had two MVP summits, and then it's been a a little, a a bit of a a shifting thing throughout the years. And then, like you, uh, this is my you know my first renewal for the two year term for the regional director, and and for those people, I know I get a lot of questions. The first thing people think when they hear Microsoft regional director is like. How long have you been working for Microsoft? And right. of course, we're not employees. We're unpaid advisors. And really, we're, the way it was explained to me is that we're advisors to like the top echelon of Microsoft, like the, you know, the directors, GMs, VPs, and, uh, and above that. And the level of interaction, in we have got a bunch of uh, uh, distribution groups, email groups that we participate in. We can actually talk about that in a minute why they hold so tightly to uh, email lists, distribution lists versus other tools. Uh, I would love to get your thoughts on that. Um, uh, Cause when we both came in, that was a very impassioned discussion and it was, was tempered topic, yeah. this, this last time with all the newbies coming in. Yeah. Uh, but there are roughly around 200 RDs globally. Um, so it's uh, yeah. Have you participated in any, uh, like white papers or any specific, you know, uh, topics, you know, to provide feedback back to Microsoft in your RD role? Yeah, uh, I think this time last year, uh, I, I participated in a white paper where we were putting together uh, some information on, on how people are, are uh, adopting the cloud and how people are, 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 are uh, buying Azure and things like that. So that was, that was a pretty impactful thing that we were able to bring back to the, to the product team. But yeah, it, it's, it's a great program to be in because, you know, at the end of the day, we, we almost become the, the this advocate for for the not just for the community, but for the for the corporate world that all, all these users that are uh, using Microsoft technologies. It's not just a single technology, right? From the MVP perspective, everyone knows me as this guy who's who's an expert on the on the, on the DevOps for Azure DevOps, formerly TFS. But when we look at uh, RD, it goes beyond that, right? It, right. It, 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 it's uh, companies who are leveraging Microsoft technologies. How are they using it? Uh, maybe something that's intended for one thing, but then the company is using it a different way. And then be able to take that feedback back to the, uh, back to Microsoft and, and, and have the voice of the user back to, back to corporate. It's, it's, a, it's a super impactful. Well, and I guess that's a key difference between the MVP program is that the MVP is a reward. It's a recognition for what you did for the community in the year prior. And so it's not even necessarily anything, any interaction with Microsoft. It was giving to the community. And so these are, uh, you know, across the board, they're people that go above and beyond what their day job has them do. It's not, in fact, is part of your, the, the application process where you're sharing, you know, here's what I've done out in the community. Like you don't count the things that you were paid by your boss to exactly. do your company. This is the stuff that you're doing above and beyond. And uh, mm-hmm. Like I, I uh, was very active for many years in the SharePoint Saturday thing, and 
as most people know, uh, my company was, I was very thankful that they paid for my flights and things out there. It was my weekends I was giving away. It was the, you know, those sessions. And, and uh, one year I did, it was the most I ever did in a single year. I did 18 SharePoint Saturday events. Wow. That's 18 of my weekends to give away. And yeah, my, my wife and children were not as impressed, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was just a lot of time away. But um, yeah, it's, you know, versus the regional director program, which is where, as you point out, there's opportunities for us to share our deep industry insights and to have, it's more of a, you know, two-way conversation with Microsoft, provide this feedback, sometimes work through and solve problems, the actual mechanics of how Microsoft, uh, uh, you know, offers their, their solutions to the world. And, yeah. and uh, it's actually a common occurrence where an RD will post to the, one of the lists and say, I have three customers, I've seen this, this is a problem, this is how Microsoft does this, and here's what we actually expect to happen, yeah. Why is that? How can we change this and work through it? And it's uh, it's fantastic to see VPs and all the way down the chain, you know, jump in and right there to you know provide feedback. It's it's uh, it, it's been uh, really eye opening to see uh, how hands on, uh, especially the senior execs get in a lot of these issues that are customer impacting. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, the expectation is going is that these are people who are gonna. We obviously have a technology focus, but has are able to speak to the business and have uh, an impact across uh, multiple different uh, technology aspects within the organization, right? Uh, you know, with you know, I know my expertise is in Azure and DevOps, but I'm having conversations with with, with executives about how they should be using their their collaboration things, right? And in, right. in your case, you're probably having uh, some conversations, or at least bringing back information to Microsoft about how uh, companies are thinking about the cloud strategy as well, right? So it's it's uh, it, it goes beyond what Micro is. I think um, it's probably about half of the RDs who are not MVPs, right? So it's not right. you don't have yeah, to be. Yeah, it's about MVP. half. Right. So yep. yeah, it's 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 um, it's a great uh, you know all the, all these Microsoft programs are are amazing to be involved with because I you know you get to interact with a lot of people who are uh, you know like minded, community minded, uh, and and people who are out there talking to customers and at the same time, like you said, get to interact with some people at Microsoft that typically on, on a, my day-to-day -day basis, I wouldn't be able to interact with, or at least just watch some conversations over email, like right. that, that go beyond what I typically would see. So it's great. Well, it, generally MVPs and RDs, you know, the, this, the same way are again, very uh, you know, active in the discussions that are happening in the community. And, and uh, you know, some of us more interactive than others with, with Microsoft uh, Teams. There's a lot of, uh, we get invited to, well, as you did, uh, to, to write a white paper, which will never be seen by the world. It's for internal consumption only. Um, sometimes there were, like I, I'm sure you have, I've, I've written uh, uh, papers, articles that have appeared as, under the Microsoft brand as part of docs.microsoft.com and, yep. and, uh, you know, and help there. I've done other research where Microsoft co-sponsored or sponsored fully uh, independent research that I, you know my team has done, and uh, and so a lot of those opportunities that that come up because of of the status, which is obviously it's a, it's a great thing. But uh, I know I, just for everybody out there wondering, it's like, well, this is all fine and dandy for you guys that are already MVPs and RDs, <laughs> um, but something that Microsoft asks us to do constantly is to look out there and help them identify the next wave of MVPs and RDs. So yeah. finding people that are you know, passionate about community, number one, uh, and then two, that look for those opportunities and, and novel ways of reaching uh, audiences, but of uh, serving the community. Uh, and then, yeah. you know, so. For sure. Yeah, I, uh, you know, before, before I became an MVP, probably about four years before that, I had started speaking at user groups, uh, user groups and, and code camps. And, you know, with my com community involvement, I, I became an MVP and now, uh, I'm still involved with those events now, a little different with, with yeah. everything being virtual, yeah. but I'm always on the lookout for, you know, uh, speakers who are, who are trying to help the community and, and sort of guide them a little bit, mentor them on, on how to become an MVP. I've helped uh, four or five people become MVPs over the last few yeah. years. And it's a, it's a great, um, it's really rewarding to be able to see that, see that path, right? And at least yeah. create a path for people to be able to get there. Yeah, agreed. And and it's something that's also uh, interesting too is that so you're uh, you've been an ALM 
MVP from the start? That's what you're originally? Yeah, my, my first MVP was in ALM, and, and, and the ALM program had been around for a, a couple of years before I got there, so there's a few people had been there before me, but yeah, my, I was first ALM, and that, that, that later on became developer technologies, yep. uh, but that's my, my focus was initially was all about TFS, then moved on to you know, right. Azure, Visual Studio Online, then Azure DevOps, so yeah, it's, been, well, uh, it's been an evolving thing. It's, it's interesting to, to, because that space, and, and I shared with you beforehand, you know, my my background, I was uh, started out as a business analyst and project manager, but I've been in IT for 30 years yeah. and uh, got into the, you know, what we now know is the DevOps space. And, you know, I, I got involved with, uh, in fact, I started a, a co-founded a company that we sold the Rational Software back in 2001. But for years, I had a relationship with, with Rational. And uh, if, you, if you remember the Rational uh, uh, you know, the rational rows as well as yep. their software configuration management uh, uh, yeah. solutions, you know, that they're really well known for. IBM, of course, acquired them. I had a short relationship with IBM before. Uh, I wrote a book on uh, ClearQuest, yeah. uh, their Remember product Clear ClearQuest and ClearCase and all those. Yeah, uh, so ClearCase is the SEM platform. So I wrote two books on, on uh, ClearCase related to one on ClearQuest. I think it's mm -hmm. the only book that was ever written on ClearQuest. <laughs> Uh, there because it it really didn't need to have a whole book to itself, but we did, and uh, it's actually performed pretty well. Um, but they it came it went live. It was published about a month after I started working for Microsoft, so they wanted <laughs> me to promote it, and I'm like, sorry, I can't promote yeah. my own book. Yeah, I can't do it. Sorry, um, but I, I was going to ask you so. You know, the, the DevOps space is, you know, for a long time, it wasn't really a space that Microsoft was known for. And so it's, it's still a relatively new thing. I mean, when I was back in the SCM world and the work that we did, um, you know, it, it wasn't this uh, cohesive group of all the technology things that were, were out there. So, you know, how has that space matured in the Microsoft ecosystem? Yeah, it's been it's been a, a a pretty interesting journey to see over over the years, right? If you look back, you know, 20 years ago when many companies out there were using Visual Source Safe, and there's probably a few out there that are still have that one Visual Source Safe. Uh, was that built by? Was that a Microsoft project or was that an acquisition? It was an acquisition. So okay. They, they acquired the, the company. Was uh, and the, the same team that they acquired then later uh, built Team Foundation Server. So TFS okay. was a Microsoft product by the same team led by Brian Harry that had built VSS before that. Well, because they had also hired some clear case guys. That's how it just, I was aware of some of that back in that. Was yeah. that, that was like, what was that 2003, 2004? Yeah, so, so TFS, the first version was in uh, TFS 2005 that was released okay, yeah. into, so, uh, somewhere around 2006, right? right? So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's probably around then. So TFS, the initial version was all about was version control and build automation, a very rudimentary, Yep. build automation uh, system. Uh, over time, it started including things like uh, um, st user story management, task management, the work item system that TFS had. Uh, then they added uh, test case management. And once they added test case management, they started, they sort of rebranded or started, they started talking about the ALM space. Now, now they could truly say, this is not just a developer tool. This is a tool that helps you get from idea to as close to production as possible, right? But you could do, um, you know, user stories, you could do version control, you can do builds, yep. and you could do test case management. Yeah, we wrote, in fact, when that came out, so was that 2005? Uh, no, the, the first MTM version, Microsoft Test Manager was 20, 2012, I believe. Was it that MTM. late? Okay. Uh, I just I just remember that we, uh, so we deployed TFS though, and back in 2005 for this client. Oh yeah, TFS 2005 was, was the initial version. I, re and, I remember that was like, you have to follow all these steps and eventually now it's like click, 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 go. Right. Yeah. So, but, but we, the initial we, one. Yeah. So the part that I owned of that, I mean, so my, my team was part of the, that deployment, but we was also project server. That's how I found my way into SharePoint. That was my beginning was because that we, as part of that, we deployed the WSS. So it was that 2.0. Yeah. That, that, that sounds right. Because yeah. I remember the, yeah, the, the first version of DFS came with SharePoint. Yep. Uh, probably a lighter version of SharePoint. Yeah, WSS 2.0. Yeah, because yeah. a year later when 3.0 came out and yeah. That's right. And that, that eventually they, they removed the SharePoint piece and then you're able to have some nice dashboards within TFS. And they started, they, then they matured the agile side, the user story. And they started uh, you know, catching up with some of the other vendors out there that have the, some of the agile tooling. 
Um, and then uh, around 2013, they acquired another uh, release management uh, tool and then they added that to TFS 2013. Around 2015, they finally had something that you could truly say you could follow something from idea all the way to production with release management, right? So yeah. it, was a, it was a bit of a journey to get there. And then over the past five years, they, they've done a big shift from a, a fully on-premises solution to now a SaaS solution with uh, Azure DevOps. So along the way, you had TF, the Team Foundation Service, you have Visual Studio Online, and then, then Azure DevOps, which so it's been a few different names. Uh, In the Azure there. DevOps, and I know there was a, so I actually have an interview scheduled where we're going to talk about the similarities, the differences between uh, Project Online Azure DevOps and Planner, yeah. Okay, and, yeah. uh, and 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 uh, and then ask some big questions around. Yeah. Well, I don't. I, I actually have quite. Maybe you know a little bit more, but you know, is Microsoft even thinking about uh, uh, some kinds of integrations in between those three? Because there are massive gaps. There are three standalone, separate solutions today that look and act in some ways alike and are, are serving common needs, but yeah. 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 I've, I've, I've heard some things about nothing that's been, uh, I guess, public enough to be able to talk about, but it's just funny because if you look back at 2010, there was a clear connection between TFS and project server, right? right. You could make that connection. You could make updates and there'll be a, a, a two way, a two way right. synchronization that was removed at some point. Uh, I can't yeah. remember exactly when, but, but I've heard some, some people ask for that again. Um, so, you know, what, all, all those changes, all the things that have been added to Azure DevOps now, Azure DevOps has become the, the best way to be able to deploy to Azure, right? So it's a yeah. great tool. You can deploy to any cloud, but there's probably no better way to, to deploy something to, to Azure, right? If you have, if you have a, a built pipeline, whether your code is coming from GitHub, from Bitbucket, from Azure DevOps itself, if you, once you get into Azure, uh, Azure pipelines, you're able to get to Azure, right? And, those, right. Uh, and, and it's a journey from where they are to where, where, where they were to where they are right now. Uh, even, um, uh, you, know, the, you know, being able to move to a SaaS platform where they are releasing new features every three weeks and be, be, instead of waiting two, three years for new features, it's been a pretty big uh, change that they've done. And now that whole team is now sort of shifted their, 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 um, their focus, you know, with the GitHub acquisition now two years ago. It's crazy how t time flies, right? It was two years ago when Microsoft uh, announced uh, the acquisition. Now you you have a lot of those people working uh, on 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 the, on the GitHub side, and a lot right. of those people are starting to build a lot of the features for GitHub. So that that that's going to be a. Yeah. Again, I, and I'm not you know a active within the community. I try to I read up and 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 uh, on a few different things. I know quite a few people that have kind of moved over from you know the Microsoft collaboration stack over into the DevOps world, and some that have left the Microsoft ecosystem. Good friends that have kind of gone over as DevOps as a category as a space. I mean, there's massive conferences globally, oh, yeah. or there were before the COVID happened. But uh, right. yeah, there you know, but these events and and. Uh, and I've always wondered, like, kind of Microsoft's position within that world. Again, I just I don't have any personal insights into you know how Microsoft is in the in the solutions on this side of of the world. You know, kind yeah, of stand up to competitive solutions. It's been a it's it's been an evolving thing. I remember being uh, I think it was around 2015. I spoke at a, in Austin, Texas, at a DevOps Day Austin. Yeah. Uh, my session and one more session by someone else were the only Microsoft focused sessions out of the entire two day event. Everything else was everything but Microsoft, right? Uh, and in the I past, might have been at that event. Oh yeah, there was a well, there was there was a it was 2015 or 2016. I'll have to go back and look, but it was um, uh, so uh, Naomi Moneypenny, who's now at Microsoft, Eric Shups, uh, and myself, and a couple other folks. I'm trying to remember who else was on stage. Eric Harlan, whatever, did a but a Microsoft centric. We did a keynote, a panel up on one of the stages at that yeah. event. But uh, yeah, anyway. might have been that. So, but now when I go to the Microsoft or, or sorry, to the DevOps events, there's so much more talk about Microsoft, right? I mean, think about the transformation that Microsoft itself has done since 2014, where now it's a much more open Microsoft. It's a much it's a Microsoft that no longer cares about only deploying to to Azure, it's a, well, with our tools, you're able to deploy to AWS, you're able to deploy to 
to Google and, and, right. and all the things like that. Well, so. I think that's one thing that I have read and seen in numerous places and read some of the comments about is that people are surprised and pleased that Microsoft has left GitHub alone. You know, largely they've not yeah. gone in and made it a, a Microsoft only technology. And, and that is, I mean, a lot of that, I mean, you, you have to credit the leadership of Satya sure. um, and, and his first keynote where he demoed on, I believe it was an iPad. Uh, I was trying to remember if it was an iPhone or an iPad, but his first keynote, which was at the partner conference when he became CEO, is his first yeah. public address. And he demos on that technology. And he made a statement, I'll, I'll paraphrase it because I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said, you know, our goal is to build the best software in the world kind of statement. Yeah. And he said, and where we don't have the best solution or any solution, we will partner and we will integrate because we need to provide the best experiences for our customers. And he talked about, he's like, we may have the best of this piece and the best of this piece, but this is what our customers are trying to do. And we have to make sure that they have a good experience along the entire continuum, not just with the pieces we own. And I mean, that was just, that's a fundamental difference from the bomber sure. era. I, 100% and then, and, and, you know, focusing on the integration points, like from GitHub, for example, now you, you, you're, you're able to integrate into Azure DevOps just like you can integrate into other, other tool sets out there. You're right. able to deploy to Azure just like you can deploy to AWS or GCP or, or even on-premises, right? So I think keeping that in mind and then just enabling developers out in the world to be able to do more with the tooling is, 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 uh, it's a big deal. Yeah. Well, what kind of stuff are you actively presenting on? What, what do you present on and talk on back when we used to do conferences? <laughs> so uh, a couple of things I'm pretty passionate about is, is uh, one is I, I help companies or I help teams go to the cloud. And I, in, in my mind is you, you can't be successful with the cloud without having, having a DevOps mindset. And by that, I mean, being able to deploy early and often a, a, re, a repeatable thing, right. like being able yep. to automate as much as possible and creating that feedback loop, right? So a nice combination of both DevOps and cloud. So uh, I speak about infrastructure as code. So a great way for you to be able to spin things up and turn things down and then spin them again, the exact same way every single time. Yep. Uh, I talk about something called application insights, which is being able to get telemetry of your running application and make decisions uh, to be able to- yeah, The word telemetry is part of the Microsoft drinking game. I'll just take a sip. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and then uh, lately, uh, especially over the last uh, uh, six months, so actually I've done one virtual conference. I was going to speak at my first international conference in, in May. I was going to go be in Sweden for DevSum, but I did it instead. I did it from here from Orlando. Uh, I spoke about GitHub and how to leverage GitHub to get to Azure. So if you're a GitHub developer, how do I get my code? What are the things I'm able to do? And and and, and right-click deploy doesn't that doesn't uh, count, right? right. So um, uh, so really, how do you set up your pipelines on your Azure uh, or, or your uh, GitHub Actions to be able to get to to Azure? So a, a lot of that uh, I would call developer enablement uh, to go a little bit faster. That that that's where that's where I'm typically at. Yeah, no, that's that's a a, a good space. I know that it's uh, you know we we've we've talked about there's. Uh, you know, Microsoft has gotten so much better at documentation and the, the guidance to, uh, you know, end users, business users, as well as admins and developers at kind of all levels, the, the number of resources that are out there. Um, I, I always like to ask, you know, kind of people that want to learn more, like where are your recommended kind of first steps in to, to, to understand Microsoft's vision for ALM and kind of where to go and get kind of up to speed with the latest? Is there... You know, yeah, you so just like just like the, the product has evolved, uh, the, the documentation has evolved so much. There's a, there's a, there's a very immersive uh, set of documents, both on the on the Microsoft side and the GitHub side. GitHub side has this great labs uh, where you're able to follow along and and uh, uh, it's super interactive. So typically go there. Uh, you know, there, there's there's a few courses out there in, on on LinkedIn Learning and in Plural side as well that, that people can follow with different tracks. Uh, but my first go-to is, uh, you know, start with uh, uh, Azure DevOps documentation. You're going to start there, and there, there's a really easy to follow uh, a guide to be able to learn whatever, whether it's on the co on the team collaboration side with the, the Agile tooling, uh, whether it's on the pipeline side, whether it's on the on the on the version control side. So it's it's it's, uh, it's a pretty powerful stuff right there. 
That's very cool. Well, it, you know, if, if people want to find out more about you, get in touch with you, what's the best way that they can uh, reach out to you? Yeah, the easiest way, I'm, I'm, I try to be somewhat active on Twitter. So Esteban F. Garcia on Twitter is where you can find me. Uh, also reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, that, those are the easiest way for, for us to just reach out. Reach out. I'm happy to uh, uh, collaborate with you. Yeah, that's and that's always kind of the rule of thumb for MVPs and, and RDs, but obviously MVPs especially. Um, we are all open to connecting. So if you ever just follow what one of us writes or you hear us or whatever it is, see us, like come up, just introduce, reach out to us. I always like to say, especially through LinkedIn, attach a note like, hey, I just read this or I just saw like a reason for connecting is always I, nice. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that goes uh, a long way. Yeah, because if there's no obvious connection, I might not connect with the person. But otherwise, if somebody says, hey, I just saw you in this webinar or I caught one of your sessions at this conference, like I'll immediately connect with those people. Yeah, and, and sometimes, you know, even if it's, uh, you know, me being able to connect you with some, with some piece of information or connect you with someone, uh, you know, I'm happy to do those things. Uh, anything that I can do to help people um, continue on their, on their cloud journey or on their DevOps journey, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, you can't know everything, but at least if I'm able to connect you with, 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 a, with that piece of information, that I might be solving uh, someone's problem. That's that. Sometimes the best help is uh, is you, you don't expect everybody to know the answer to everything. But if you can point me to the person who knows the answer, that's that's a great resource. Well, Esteban, it was really great connecting and uh, and catching up, and hopefully we'll be able to see each other in person one of these days someday. That was great, it was, uh, yeah. definitely. Uh, thank you for having me on. It was great speaking with you, and uh, definitely uh, enjoy the conversation. All right, talk to you later. All right. Wow.